Welcome to KPIS Delhi's CARE initiative, Current Affairs Through Reverse Engineering. This is Goli Varsha. Let us look into the articles for the day. These are the articles and topics that we will be covering today. Let us look into the first article for the day. Union Minister Sri Parishottam Rupala releases basic animal husbandry statistics 2023 during National Milk Day event at Guwahati today. Now, some statistics in this particular Animal Husbandry Statistics 2023 report are very important for prelims. Okay, so milk, egg, meat and wool production. Okay, if we divide into four components, milk production, it is stopped by Uttar Pradesh. Egg production is stopped by Andhra Pradesh, meat again by Uttar Pradesh and wool production by Jammu and Kashmir. Okay, so 22.5 percent that is 22.55 or 22.6 percent. All right, and Uttar Pradesh stands at 15.72 percent of the total milk production in India, and Andhra Pradesh nearly 20 percent of the total egg production in India. All right, and it is meat production. Uttar Pradesh stands at 12 percent. Okay, and uh, what are the other states? UP followed by Rajasthan, followed by Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, then AP. Okay, top three you try to remember. Okay, it is UP, Rajasthan, and then MP. Egg production, it is AP, Tamil Nadu. Telangana. Okay. So, southern states AP, Tamil Nadu and Telangana. Okay. Now, meat production, it is UP, West Bengal, Maharashtra. UP, West Bengal and Maharashtra. And wool production, it is Jammu Kashmir, then Gujarat, then Maharashtra. Okay. Please be thorough with these statistics. All right. Now, let us look into the question. Consider the following statements. Andhra Pradesh is the largest egg producing state in India. Yes, true, right? We have seen here. Andhra Pradesh, egg producing state. Fine. Now, Andhra Pradesh is the largest milk producing state in India. No, milk production is stopped by Uttar Pradesh. So, this is gone Uttar Pradesh, followed by Rajasthan, then Madhya Pradesh. All right. It is UP or MP ke beach mein Rajasthan. Okay, so the order is like that, UP, Rajasthan and then MP. Okay, next, Rajasthan is the largest wool producing state in India. No, it is Jammu Kashmir. We will have camel, no, in Rajasthan, more number of camel. So, there is no scope of wool, woolen production, there is no scope for Rajasthan to top the chart. There will be woolen production, no doubt. However, it cannot top the chart because in Jammu and Kashmir, the weather is very cold and the, uh, the sheep population is abundant. Okay, that's why this pashmina wool, you know, Jammu and Kashmir is famous for what? Shawls, right? So, yeah, even if lo by logic, if you um, try to attempt this question here, yeah, so that you can eliminate this option, all right? Now, so only one is correct all right in india markets and agricultural products are regulated under a essential commodities act of 1955 no this is wrong because essential commodities act is used by the government you know to declare few co uh, commodities as essential so as to make them available to the consumers at fair prices okay for instance, during the pandemic, sanitizers and masks were also declared as essential commodities, okay, in 2020, all right. So, this is not particularly uh, about agricultural products. It is a basket of products which the government shall declare as essential. You got my point? So, this is eliminated. So, this essential items can be anything, drugs, fertilizers, pulses, petroleum products, okay. So, it can be anything. It is not only agricultural products, all right. So, this is gone. 
Now, Agricultural Produce Market Committee Act enacted by the states. This is correct. Okay. We all know that agriculture is a state subject. All right. And this APMC Act enacted by the states actually regulates the markets in agricultural products. Okay. So, B is the answer. Fine. Next article. SEBI eases fundraising norms for non-profit organizations on social stock exchanges. For prelims, you should know what this means. Social stock exchanges. What is the meaning of social stock exchange? Social stock exchange is, is for the enterprises that work for the welfare of the society or community. All right. So, these enterprises should be set up as charitable associations. Okay, and SSC's objective is to provide an alternative fundraising instrument for such organization. Okay, so there are social enterprises which want to work for the welfare of people. Okay, how do they raise funds for that purpose? The social stock exchange is in place. You got my point? So, in social stock exchange, two forms of social enterprises can be engaged. Okay which want to create a positive social impact. One is the not-for-profit organization and second it is for-profit social organizations. Okay. Now, if a retail investor wants to invest in this particular social stock, uh, social stocks, then he is allowed to invest only in securities offered by for-profit social organizations, alright? And only Indians can register in this social stock exchange, okay? So, these are some important points, basic points, okay? Now, we will get into the MCQ. Consider the following statements with regard to social stock exchange in India. Only Indian entities can register in social stock exchange, this is correct. Retail and institutional investors can invest in all types of enterprises listed on social stock exchange. All types, not all types, only for profit. Okay, for profit social organizations. Okay, so this is wrong. Both for profit social enterprises and not for profit organizations can register on social stock exchange. This is correct. So, B, two statements are right. All right, now consider the following statements. Sensex is based on 50 of the most important stocks available in Bombay Stock Exchange. It is not 50, it is 30. You know, 30 most, um, you know, financially and sound, financially sound companies also refer to as blue chip companies. Okay, so they are 30. All right, so one is wrong. When one is wrong, B is gone. For calculating the Sensex, all the Sensex stocks are assigned proportional weightage. This is correct. So, D is gone. New York Stock Exchange is the only stock exchange in the world. It is not New York Stock Exchange. It is Amsterdam Stock Exchange in Netherlands. Amsterdam Stock Exchange in Netherlands, which was established in the year 1602 by the Dutch East India Company. Alright, so this is gone. So, 2 is the correct answer. Alright, now. Next article, why is Bihar demanding the special category status explained? For prelims, the uh, special category status criteria and what all states are there uh, which are given special category status by the center. That data is important. All right. Now, what is the context? Why is Bihar demanding? Because the demand, the demand comes in the backdrop of the findings from the Bihar caste based survey 2022. What happened in that survey? What did the people or what did the um, commoners get to know? They got to know that nearly one third of Bihar's population continues to live in poverty. Okay, so that is the triggering point. Why Bihar is demanding special uh, category status? This is the primary reason. Alright, now we'll get to the basics of special category status. Okay, what is special category status? It is a classification granted by the center to assist the development, development of states that face geographical or socio-economic disadvantages. 
okay and the social uh, special category status was introduced in the year 1969 on the recommendation of the fifth finance commission okay now what is the criteria if you have to write down five things in criteria to designate a status uh, to designate a state as a special category status state what are those one hilly and difficult terrain two low population density okay or sizable share of population okay next third is strategic location along the international borders international borders this is about hilly or difficult terrain second one is about population third one is about strategic location along international borders fourth one is about economic and infrastructural backwardness economic and infra backwardness all right and fifth one is non viable nature of state finances all right so basically these five things are there yeah now how many states are there uh, in the special category status in the country all the northeastern states plus uh, northeastern states as an assam nagaland arunachal pradesh manipur meghalaya sikkim okay and mizoram uh, plus 3 himachal pradesh uttarakhand and telangana okay so northeastern states plus 3 what are those past three states himachal pradesh uttarakhand and telangana all right now we'll look into the mcq consider the following statements with regard to special category status it was introduced in the year 1969 on the recommendation of the planning commission no this is wrong it is the fifth finance commission okay now recently bihar and orissa were given the special category status this is also wrong if they were given um, special category status why would they demand again okay so none of these statements are correct all right now which one among the following is not correct a special category state invariably is a okay uh, whatever the criteria we have seen no it is based on that is a border state yes this is one criterion harsh terrain yes low literacy there's nothing about literacy no so this is wrong has poor infrastructure yes so c is the answer all right now how daos are shaping the future of digital world now what are daos these are decentralized autonomous organizations so decentralized autonomous organization is an entity structure in which token holders participate in the management and decision making of an entity which means there is no central governing body okay and members share a common goal to act in the best interest of the entity all right this was popularized through cryptocurrency enthusiasts and blockchain technology okay daos are used to make decisions in the bottom up management approach did you get my point daos means they operate without a centralized control the name itself is saying no decentralized autonomous organizations so they operate without centralized control okay and they are driven by blockchain based smart contracts okay and daos are organizations that are governed by transparent rules encoded in the computer programs all right okay so they will be self sustaining self sustaining and they will be what community driven okay so let us look into the mcq what is the primary mechanism through which decentralized autonomous organizations operate demonstrating their autonomy and transparency centralized control no 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 it is going against the full form only na no? so this is gone artificial intelligence algorithms and neural networks no smart contracts and member consensus on blockchain this is the answer right based on whatever basics we have learned just now this is the answer right now with reference to non fungible tokens consider the following statements first of all you should know what these non fungible tokens are okay so some basic definition i'll explain yeah 
non fungible tokens are a kind of cryptocurrency okay crypto currency that represents a one of a kind digital asset or a unique piece of art okay now they enable the digital representation of physical assets this is correct they are unique crypt crypt uh, cryptographic tokens that exist on a blockchain this is also correct so one and two when they're correct b is gone c is gone they can be traded or exchanged at equivalence and therefore can be used as medium of commercial transactions this is wrong okay because here non fungible tokens are uh, representing what one unique piece of art no so there's no equivalence okay hence they cannot be used as a medium of transaction all right so one and two is correct next ladakh will soon have southeast asia's first night sky sanctuary says union minister dr jitendra singh so what are they referring to they are referring to the hanley dark sky reserve okay it is in hanley village of ladakh okay it's part of changtang wildlife sanctuary the part of changtang wildlife sanctuary okay and it is also adjacent to the indian astronomical observatory yeah this hanley dark sky reserve is one of the highest located sites for optical infrared and gamma ray telescopes all right now we'll see some basics about this changtang wildlife sanctuary somoriri lake is present here okay and it is getting its name through the plateau's name that is changtang plateau all right so these are two points you have to remember and let us go into the mcq consider the following statements with ref, uh, with regard to changtang wildlife sanctuary it is located in the union territory of ladakh this is correct henley dark sky reserve is located within this wildlife sanctuary yes this is also correct so both the statements are right okay and here there is also one famous monastery that is korzok monastery all right now what is a constellation what is a constellation stars forming a group that have a particular recognizable shape is called a constellation right now a particular pattern of equidistant stars from the earth in the sky see particular pattern is fine but equidistant no okay a particular pattern of stars that may not be may not be equidistant from the earth in the sky this is correct all right now Indian Coast Guard conducts ninth national level pollution response exercise national level pollution response exercise nat poltrex 9 of vadin um of vadina in gujarat okay now what is the objective of this one to check the level of preparedness and coordination between various resource agencies to respond to what maritime oil spill okay now you should know one thing here that indian coast guard assumed the responsibilities for protecting the maritime environment in the maritime zones of india on 7th of march in the year 1986 okay when these responsibilities were transferred from ministry of shipping to indian coast guard all right so now um this particular agency indian coast guard is responsible to take care of the maritime uh, marine environment in the maritime zones okay now this exercise was conducted invoking the provisions of what national oil spill disaster contingency plan all right this indian coast guard has established four pollution response centers at mumbai chennai port blair port blair and vadinar all right so these are some basics pertaining to this article now which organization is the nodal agency in dealing with maritime marine spills along the indian coastline it is indian coast guard not ministry of shipping from ministry of shipping this indian coast guard took over the responsibilities in the year 1986 itself all right so b is the answer which bacterial strain developed from natural isolated 
biogenetic manipulations can be used for treating oil spills. So it is pseudomonas. Now what is this agrobacterium? Agro agrobacterium is known to cause tumors in plants. Okay. Now what is clostridium known for? Clostridium known for is known for causing diseases like tetanus and botulism. Okay. So this is also not the answer. This is nitrosomonas. So this is you particularly used in wastewater treatment plants. Okay. So this is also not the answer. It is pseudomonas. All right. So this is the answer now. Country celebrates Constitution Day to mark adoption of the Indian Constitution. Okay. So you have to remember one thing. Twenty sixth November, nineteen forty nine. It is the date on which the constitution was adopted. Okay. But it came into force on 26th of January 1950. Now why 26th of January? Why is Republic Day celebrated on that day? Because the constitution came into effect from that day. Okay. And this also has some history. And that is see in the year 1929 the Indian National Congress on 19th December in the Lahore session, it passed a resolution for Purna Swaraj of complete self-rule and then it decided that 26th January of 1913 will be celebrated as Independence Day by the Indians. Okay, so to know the historical aspect, um, if you want to know the historical aspect, then this is the thing. All right, now consider the following statements. Constitution came into force on 26th January 1950. Yes, this is correct. 26th November is declared as a constitution day in the year 1950. No, this is this was not declared as constitution day in the year 1950. It was declared as constitution day in the year 2015. All right. So one is correct. Now consider the following statements with respect to the constitution day. Statement 1. The Constitution Day is celebrated on 26th of November every year to promote constitutional values among citizens. This is correct. On 26th November 1949, the Constituent Assembly of India set up a drafting committee under the chairmanship of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar to prepare a draft Constitution of India. This is wrong because on this day, the Constitution was adopted. Okay, which means the drafting committee has already drafted the um, constitution right so this cannot be true okay actually for your information this drafting committee was set up on august 29th in the year 1947 which means it was set up after india's independence that can also be a potential question okay so this is wrong so statement one is correct but statement two is incorrect all right now piezoelectricity why quartz sticks now, we should know what is piezoelectricity. See, uh, if the electric charge accumulates in a certain solid material such as crystals or say ceramics or biological matter like DNA or bone or any protein in response to applied me uh, mechanical stress. See, if a stress is applied on some solid or say any biological matter, and then if the electric charge is getting accumulated, such a uh, thing is known as piezoelectricity. All right. So this means that this results from what pressure and latent heat. So what are the uh, piezoelectric materials? One is the pressure sensors. Next is accelerometers. And third is acoustic devices. All right. Now we'll get into the MCQ. Piezoelectric materials are usually used in how many of the options listed below? Pressure sensors, yes. Accelerometers, yes. Acoustic devices, yes. Watches also, yes. Quads is used, no? So, this is also correct. So, all the above. For reproducing sound, a CD, compact disc audio player uses a quartz crystal, no. Titanium needle, no. Laser beam, yes. It uses laser beam, okay. The series replaced floppy disc, no? So, yeah, C is the answer. Now, plants warn each other of danger and now we can watch them. This is so fascinating, right? Yeah, so what is the theme that is explained in this article? The theme is green leaf 
volatiles. Now what are these green leaf volatiles? They are organic compounds produced by plants and they play a crucial role in plant defense and ecological interactions. Okay. Now what is the primary function? The primary function is defense signaling. Defense signaling. Okay. So uh, these GLVs act as signaling molecules in response to stresses. Okay. And they activate some kind of pathways in plants. All right. And these GLVs also facilitate plant communication, sharing information about threats within the plant communities. Okay, so this is a very, very um, fascinating thing, right? Now we'll get into the MCQ. Which of the following is the key role played by green leaf volatiles in plant ecology? Root nutrition absorption? No. Flower pollination? No. Seed germination? No. Different signaling against herbivores? Yes, this is correct. You know, um, how can we use these GLVs? If we manipulate GLVs, this offers us a potential for sustainable pest control management in agriculture, right? And it reduces the reliance on chemical pesticides. All right. Now, a plant leaf appears to be green because it absorbs green light. No, we will see whatever one reflects, right? So, it is reflecting green light. C is the answer. Alright, so this is it for today. All the best.